Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Pod Stallion short. Uh, to my left is Jason. Hello, everyone. And I am, of course, the other guy. Uh, and we've decided to do a, a mini episode, a, a visual episode, and pick one of my favorite subjects, which is Japanese toy commercials. Um, they're bananas, and I love them. And I haven't seen a ton over the years, so this is going to be exciting. I have not – I've only scanned this the first minute or two, so this yeah. is going to be all brand-new virginal territory for me. Um, you can understand that we had laws against advertising this well to children here. I don't think our North American brains could have handled these commercials as kids. I think it would have driven us to a frenzy. <laughs> Whereas they were somehow, you know, they had the emotional maturity to handle this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, I look at this and I would make a ton of impulsive purchases now if these commercials aired. Yeah. There's even the first couple ones I did see were just like, whoa, that's yeah. pretty. They're, they're crazy. They have budgets. So. Yeah. Um, All right. All right. Let's, so let's start our motors. Gonna count at it. Three, two. One, go. Okay, it's, here we go. Credits. Record player. Record player, yeah. Um, I believe we actually got a version of this, and I think it's the Scooby-Doo gang. Oh, wow. And they dance like this. I'm pretty sure I picked one of those up at a yard sale. Is that just generic, or do you recognize the show with that one? I don't, I think that's generic, but I think that, that record player got around. And I, I actually recognize that toast from a toy that my friend's sister had. Look at that. They're putting their hands in boiling water. <laughs> These are really, really well done. Actually, I find this kind of like the most boring race ever. But it also is just like, it's like in the, you're, you're suddenly, it looks very much like a commercial we would have seen as kids, kind of. And then you're like, yeah, oh, oh no, yeah, it, it's, it's got Japanese. the... It's, it's like got a piece of science fiction that works both ways. It's like that endless hallway that somebody lives in that would yeah. have those toys. You know, it would just go for hours, not the two seconds it takes to go down your hall. You know? This is cool. This this anti gravity. These are neat. Yeah, the magnetics. What the? F Did we ever have something like that? I do not remember anything that cool. Impressive. Now this, I believe, are the ideal Mighty Mo's. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Mighty Mo, yeah. And a tank. I would have got the tank. Now here's where I weep. Yeah, this is wow. Well, here's the thing. I um. Oh yeah, no, I, I would have died for any oh. Star Blazers toys, but those ships, I had one of those, and. Oh, here's my. Oh. This is this was my white whale until I got it. I had this, to have you, that. You have this. Oh, I have this. Yeah, I will. Ross and John I, Ross couldn't couldn't name what it was when he showed it off. Yeah. Oh, I know. I was crying. He's like, it's um, from I don't know. I forget what it is. It's the, the Yamada. Yeah. No, he. I'm saying Ross didn't know. Oh like, yeah, yeah. He didn't know what it was. Have, yeah. Oh, those are huge. Yeah. A kite and a water thing? Yeah, Star Blazers is... Much. Look at those kids! Oh, Look at those oh, jackets! Yeah. <laughs> that is the toughest looking gang of kids I've ever seen in Japan. And helmets! Wait. Okay, I got I got this stuff, this Tente stuff as a kid. I remember it. I didn't realize it was international. It's, you know... It's, it's a, yeah, it's a knockoff. Tente. I had that as a kid. Whoa, really? Yeah. There it is. There ah, it is. there's the Yamato. Coolest looking vehicles. I sold my, I found one at a flea market and sold it. Look at those. Because, they're, they're tiny. 
I know, the ch chokey old missiles. I am so disappointed in myself for selling and that thing. Two sizes? Yeah. Uh, I, I would go for both. I mean, it's like... Big... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need a wave motion gun. Oh, this is a... Uh, oh, oh. This is I remember this. Yeah, but... It... Yeah, this was... These are fun. We yeah. had... I think we had Knip Knop or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, and here's it? something you'll love. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I chose you know, that's this That's what I'm saying. Moonraker, yeah. I had that. It's the Moonraker attache. Oh, that's so I had cool. That. I love this, too. Is this, uh, is this from... Uh... I don't think it's anything. Oh, to the characters that show... Well, these are really short commercials, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I like the uniforms, though. I had that Bond attache. I never knew there was a commercial for it. It's the movie. Pretty awesome, eh? It oh, is. Oh, okay. It's so 79. Yeah, 79. Yeah, 1979. Nothing to do with Moonraker, of course. No, but no. It was a, a cool attache case. Oh, yeah. Oh. This, th these kill me. Oh, this, what is that? That is, that is Japanese Stretch Monster. Oh, wow. And, and Stretch Armstrong is called Mr. X... And so yeah, that, that, the Trinket Monster was never in the U.S. That no, one? No, no, never. The, that's that's uh, called Stretch Andro, and instead of doing a monster, they did an alien. And, wow, um, that must be worth a ton. Oh, yeah. They break your heart, though. Those elastic toys. Like, yeah, don't they all? I, I, I have horror oh, hey. stories. Yeah, weird. Oh yeah, this is the part where we're going to just censor the hell out of yeah, this. This got um, weird just now. We I just got know. we just got put in a government file. Yeah, I don't want anything to do with this commercial. I didn't even see it. I'm looking yeah, at the no, screen right now. Yeah, no, neither of us. I'd forgotten about that. I'm really very sorry. Finding commercials charming until the yeah now it's like oh no we've gone this is not where i want to be caligula for tots yeah. <laughs> the commercials there has been a miscommunication clearly yeah. okay what's going on here i don't know base invaders yeah oh. is this a tv game Oh, it's a, like a oh, target game. With oh, it's a, like, like a Throdon. Throdon. Animatronic chimp? Nope, I think that's just a... Oh. Okay, this is wrong. This is very rude. This is so wrong in so many ways. This poor... What you, this poor chimp! There's chimps and fart noises and slime. Uh, I like... I, yeah, you know, I know, a, I know collecting Mattel slime makes no sense because it's all gone. You're just collecting containers, but I I get it. I, I want to be I get there. it. I like slime. Yeah. yeah. There's a smell to that, eh? There is. There's oh, <laughs> Lee Caravello's putting challenge. Wow. <laughs> I wish we could see, like, years on these, but this has got to be probably 80, maybe, or something? Yeah, I I remember. Uh, I I was shocked to see this commercial. Other way, I didn't realize yeah, I was there was say, this any is a... love for hockey. In, yeah, in Japan, but there it is. Um, Japan, if you lose, you have to commit seppuku. So, oh, of course, yeah, that's how they play hockey. I, but um, okay, here I you remember go. my my dad in the seventies and eighties. He subscribed to all these. Um, Hong Kong importer magazine. So yeah. they were just ge generally like a phone book of ooh, there's a okay. So this stereotype. Thing is, <laughs> um, it also has to be like this has oh, this to is a eighty one. Yeah, yeah, but like whoa, the graphics. Uh, the oil oh. <gasps> um, okay, let's this? go. What is this? What is this? Yeah, I think it's called Dracula House. Dracula House? Yeah. Shit. It looks really cool. Oh, I would have been all over that. Yeah. Oh, also, and this it... seems up my alley. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. It's amazing how addictive those were. Oh, they totally were. They were frustrating. But, you know, that's, but... that's what made them addictive. You just you couldn't put them down. What I was going to say is those Hong Kong magazines, it was just like pages of these. Like there were so many home video systems that we as a society don't know about. <laughs> Sorry, is that Pac-Man, but it's called Pac-Pac-Man? I think it was some sort of variation of Pac-Man. I would really like to know 
like why Inspector Cluzo? Like, what is this? But this is like Cluzo meets meets Kurosawa. Yeah, and it's but like look, what, Pac-Man. What, Pac-Man. Is yeah, this the precursor to Pac-Man that we got. I think so. Uh, I thought Pac-Man was called Puck-Man down there, and but I thought, the reason we didn't we had to have it renamed is that uh, whoever was Valley Midway said no, it's too close to Puck Man or something like that. Um, Which you know, oh look, it's the Japanese Shanana. I think that is the Japanese version of the goodies. Oh, is it? Look, look at I look at the hilarity of. Yeah, the wacky poses. Yes. This is amazing stuff. Mm. I, I'm so enamored with this advertising, and like you, you've seen some of it now, you understand like they're they're taking some liberties that I don't think our brains could have handled. Well, they're also really quick. I mean, yeah. they get you they get you hooked in, and then it's gone. What, what do they call that in Max Hedrum? Blip verbs? Blip blip. Oh, yeah, that sounds right. Blip, yeah. Blip. What the hell? Look at this. This is a 10 second commercial. Yeah. You just barely get it out. You can't write it down fast enough for your parents. I think the Defender or Vanguard. Guys again, that's that same the goodies or, or Wiggles or whatever they're called. <laughs> Japanese Wiggles. Baseball? Oh, yeah. I like baseball. We do. It's kind of, it's actually kind of neat. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, a gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, 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 the bow tie. It's a little weird. <laughs> the bow tie? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's not what we usually, that, that's what we equate with the bartender. He's a, he's a fancy cowboy. He's a yeah. pop. Space Panic. Gorgon. Space Cruiser. Jungle Hero. Man, oh, I know these Jungle games. Hero. Yeah. Punch Boy. Punch Boy is actually also a knockoff action figure uh, that comes out of, I think, Japan. It was like a Batman and Robin, but it was Space Flyman and Punch Boy. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Space Fly- I, love, I love Punch Boy. As Punch a Boy is a good band name. Yeah. Oh, it totally is. Look at this. Oh, these are cartridges that go in the... Yeah, it like a Vetre- it's not like a Vetrex. That guy's making it with all those ladies. Cause he has oh, yeah. That... He's got that, that video game. Wow. Uh, See, I, I that reminds me of the original Nintendo baseball was like that. And, you know, hmm. your outfield were just completely useless blobs. <laughs> The, my uh, son, my son got stressed out by perfection. We had to take it away. Is that was that what that was? Perfection. Yeah, yeah it's basically perfection. Oh, that was a good game. Oh, these little guys—they're still around. These guys. Yeah. What are they called? I I don't know, but it's it reminds me of a children's show my daughter watched called Miffy the Bunny, and I always joke that like, why isn't there like little poops everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, I mean, look at how cute these are. Oh yeah, no, they're adorable. Aww. It uh, it looks like um, Richard's scary, scary. Mm. Two R's, but yeah, yeah. Uh, did you see the deer, the Super Sevens? Hey, this is a Mego toy. That oh, is really? Fabulous Fred. I had one of those in my hands today. Did that get released from the U.S.? Oh yeah, fabulous. Was like, Fred? Yeah. was it like Simon? Like you got to hit all the. Yeah, Mego Mego did good business with it though. Mego was really trying to be the handheld company, mm. and it didn't. Um, you know, it, unfortunately, it failed. But all these little cartoon characters, nothing has changed. Yeah. Oh, no. Robotech. Robotech. Oh shit. I love Robotech. Oh, I would have been all over this game. That's a great design too. That robot with the two legs. Oh yeah. No, I I thought it was really cool. I was I was on board. Uh, which one is this? What what show is this? I don't know. Oh, it looks like oh um. Oh, is this Diclone? Oh, he's sneezing over here. It's okay, bud. Uh, Can't tell the Japanese excitement. Yeah. Uh, who is that? Come on, Brian. I actually... I don't know. I actually am I'm eating Japanese Kit Kats. You failed. <laughs> Lemon salt. Who is it? 
I don't know. He looks great, the one, though. He's like a like samurai. The, the one half of the thing on his head, that's somebody, right? Yeah. I, like, yeah. Like <sighs> it's Moon Knight. <laughs> it's their version of Moon Knight. Oh, it's wonderful. <sighs> oh, my. All these colors. They're just... Oh, it, yeah. <laughs> that's Mac, That's Gundam, right? It is. It looks like a Gundam. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh. oh, that is badass. Holy yeah. shit. It just keeps... And, like, it like keeps going. They're, they're like films at this point. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's badass. Yeah. I've loved Gundam. Oh, my I God. I, I am friends with, with... those two ladies. Yeah, no, with the biggest pink lady collector, I think, in the United States. Is that pink lady? Yes. Well, I didn't... And and there they are again? Yeah, and uh, oh. my friend Corey has a, you know, so rare it's worthless <laughs> collection of stuff. I think, like, uh, they had this much merch. Yeah, no, they they were massive. And not to mention all the Jeff Altman merch you have to I mean, factor in there, too. I mean, the my God. It was an absolute bonanza. Yeah, yeah. Wow, look at that. I've lived yeah. this long and never knew there was Pink Lady... Look at this. Yeah. Well, but were they were they called Pink Lady over there? Yeah, they were. Okay. I'm still. I I, I don't quite understand what we were supposed to do with this. These two. Oh my god. Well, yeah. you know, these, these 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 things happen. You know, like yeah, like Shields and Yarnell. You can't explain it. It just all of a sudden shows up. Well, no, I don't. I think Pink Lady is a thing that really never happened here. Not because, here. But yeah, but like Fred Silverman was apparently who. who oh, you're asking this. an explanation for the U.S. show. There's yeah, not, there's not enough time or science in the world that will ever. Yeah, it's just you just use the word cocaine. I guess. Cocaine and yeah. money and <laughs> NBC in the '80s, and that's all you need to know. Yeah, yeah, because like I remember going to like the first video store I ever went to, like a cool one. A guy. <laughs> The, the guy behind the counter is like, yeah, you, you got any Pink Lady and Jeff? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's a secret handshake back then. And, and you know what? I, I had to go uh, as hipster as I wanted to be. I was like, what the hell is Pink Lady and Jeff? i never heard of those it. Are, those look like cookies you can eat. That wasn't like Play-Doh. They made the it, one it most likely is, like yeah. Is a... well, see, I see these little characters and wonder if they're just for the commercial or this they, is another show. They that look I... like Tails from the green forest okay uh, but i don't know it's oh, yeah. we, we my wife and i thought this was like, oh, wow. it's like what if you just have one of those isn't that the exact same well there's that, but it's also this is this is your training yeah this that's exactly when it's well, I said, this is propaganda. <laughs> when you're old enough to use the real one. <laughs> Learn now. Boy, a lot of baseball, huh? Yeah, and actually, me, this is another Mego toy. Like looks, Mego, Mego released this toy. Yeah. It's not their toy, but I think they put it under their banner. And it actually came with a bat with the Mego logo on it. And oh, cool. I still have the bat. Um, but yeah, it's... <laughs> Like another commercial, my wife was like, come on. Like, I'd freak out if my kids did that in the house. You certainly could do it in the house. Yeah. yeah, you can't have nice things, you know? Right. Did that just Was that just a Marlboro car? It was. Hey, that's um, weird to have in a kid's commercial, a Marlboro. Yeah, no, because Superman didn't crash into a Marlboro truck or anything. Right. <laughs> big racing. That's a big track. I never, I gotta say, I was never big into race cars. No. Nope. I, loved, I loved cars, I loved Hot Wheels, I loved the Corgis and Dinkies, and had a you know bunch of them in a box. Yeah, but, but that, no. Into the racetrack thing. It's too much work. That's and my favorite uh, Sleaford Mod song. Had, 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 had friends, um, had friends that had some, my cousin had one, and it was fun to go over and... Look at uh, it, yeah. But it's never a thing. I don't no. know what it was. Yeah, I, I... I you know, if if that's your thing, you dig yeah. it. That's cool. I I th think it's kind of neat, but yeah, I 
you know, my grandpa was into trains, and I I loved the world building, but didn't understand the fascination with you know making something move across the room. Rod Stewart building an my, entire yeah. My father uh, <laughs> sold those kites, and oh. he sold them by the pallet back Wait. in the 70s. Wait. We had those all the time, the gala kites, you know, the bat. It's yeah. weird that they were sold in Japan as well. I didn't know that. Okay, this is weird. T- take Sharpies and color the animals and then wash it off. Yeah, yeah, you got to wash that shame off. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> Stickers. Commercial Stickers. Oh, it's a, it's a, oh. Gotcha, pun. It was candy. Yeah. Yeah, it can't probably comes with you know those Remember those rice candies that had the paper, the invisible paper wrapped around each one of them? I think so. Yeah. Candy? They still make them. And I loved them as a kid. You could get them in certain like Japanese shops and then it like two thirds of the box was filled up with the rice candy and then the end was the end bit was a little op- a little section where they had the little toy. And it was like a little plastic car or a little plastic Okay, I'm getting a commercial right um so out of all this stuff jason what would you ask santa for if you could oh uh, it's a tie between four things probably um <laughs> but but because there wasn't a ton of yamato stuff there was but not compared to like gundam i really like the the giant gundam that you put together and oh yeah that thing, that the, thing never ended it had like silver on it and stuff um but I am going to say, I think probably the Yamato, the ship, the larger of the two Yamato ships. I was going to say the little, the the figure set with the electronics. I'm going to go with the figure set with the electronics. I figure one day I'll get the Yamato. If I can get the figure set that you have with the electronic stuff, then one day I'll get the ship as well. So those would be on my list. I, I would actually, let me think about this. Yeah, I think I would probably have gone for the Nomura Yamato, the ship. Yeah, um, the, the bigger one. Yeah, I, I have two. I had that, and I picked it up like at a flea market, believe it or not, locally to me. And then after my move, my move was so traumatic. I, I was selling things, you know, just to get rid of stuff. And um, I wasn't in the right place. And I sold it. I sold it to a guy who just like, cried uh when he saw it but um you also kicked him in the nuts so it's probably <laughs> when you handed it how over. dare you love this property as okay. much as i do Get away. Um, take it and you know i i regret it i really liked that toy i i mean uh, there's few things that i like that, that like star blazers kind of tugs at my heartstrings and we'll leave it at that well, and this stuff's kind of it's hard to, hard to find and everything. I, I I get that, but yeah, but it uh, uh, I mean it just it makes me nostalgic for a, 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 when that stuff was so. But you know, it's funny you say that about the <laughs> the flea market, finding it like at a flea market or something. Yeah, you're you're in a whole other world of collecting that I don't think a lot of people, certainly not in in where I live, and I don't remember it in the twin cities much there's you know there's a few comic shops left and stuff but i watched a video the other day of somebody that went into some like two or three different toys r us's in canada and it was like oh my god everything was there like stuff that has been out for six months that i've never seen on a shelf (laughs) tons of migos tons of marvel legends star wars that you know just just it was just everywhere this guy turned was you know, he was almost like, I've seen that, seen that a bunch of times. Oh, there's plenty of these. I'm like, I've never seen that. What was that? You know, there's just, it's tumbleweeds. You guys still have Toys R Us where you can go in. And, and yeah. I did the, 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 they weren't that far off from pricing here. I mean, and a little cheaper in some ways. Cause I know that I was, I was, it was kind of amused and sad at the same point. Uh, I was in there the other day. I'm waiting for the Mego superheroes to hit. I, re- I really want to see them at retail. And um, I sent my son a, uh, a note about the um, the clearance aisle. We actually have a clearance aisle there now. Unbelievable. And um, it the, the clearance prices are, they seem like they're expensive, but it was actually like $20 for a Star Wars Black series, right. which is, which is you deep. know, 
Yeah, it's cheap yep. now. He, had a, he, he this guy showed the, the clearance end cap. Yeah. And it, like, these are figures I've never even seen on the shelf, and there well, are clearance there. It kind of made me laugh because two of them, all three of them, were stuff my son and I joke about. Um, the the first one was um, Griff Carga. Griff Carga. Um, Oh, Carl, Carl Weathers. Weathers. Yeah. And my my son's way more up on his Star Wars action figure talk, but he said something to the effect of, um, you know, for some reason Hasbro <laughs> seems to think we want like every variation of this guy, and so they kind of over griffed uh, the the the, uh, the the marketplace, and um, so grifting. yeah. I think people like Carl Weathers' character, but, like, do you need every outfit variation? I don't know. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll give an end cap. I mean, I'll give an end point to this, but continue. Cause I yeah. Have, so um, then the the other character was, um, oh, my goodness. I knew his name a second ago. Uh, Rogue One. Uh, Mads Mikkelsen played him. Uh, oh, uh, or, or, or so. Uh, not Jin or so. That was the daughter. He's uh, Galen. G- Galen should, or so. And that should be easy for you to remember. Galen. Yeah. Galen, Planet of the Apes. You're right. Um, and the, that was that was like there was like 18 of them, and it's like uh, but that guy is in the movie there, for like there, 10 minutes. There is something, and I don't. I hope nobody from Hasbro hears me say this, but there is something amiss because I just went to a screening yesterday of Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania. And I'm not going to give any spoilers. Uh, I will just say that it was very enjoyable, and I think it's the best thing that they've done since uh, Endgame. Like, the best the best movie since Endgame. Mm. But the first hour of this thing, they, I mean, the creatures and the, the beings that are in the quantum, uh, quantum realm, the ships, the creatures, the characters, like... There's there is more imagination going on in the first 45 minutes of this thing. Everybody that walks past the screen is just another incredible design, just bizarre, insane heads that do things and that are, you know, just and I'm looking at this going, where are these characters? Where's why isn't there a wave out right now with all these characters? And then I looked at the most recent wave and it's like Scott Lang, the Wasp, you can build the his daughter. Uh, here's uh, Kang the Conqueror, and then a bunch of generic like from the Marvel comics. And it's like they they just you know I, I and and those and those by the way those are images that don't come out I don't think until July. The figures don't come out until July. So the movie's out, but there's no merchandise for it whatsoever. And they keep doing this with their properties where you know Andor is the best reviewed thing Star Wars thing since forever. Uh, and, and, you know, this is a huge, uh, you know, uh, following and fan base and everything, but there's nothing out for the show. There, yeah. there, there's images that have been released now, now that the show's done, images have been released for, you know, early versions of the characters, like in episode one and two, but they won't come out until the summer. And it's like, what? I, I don't understand it because it's the same thing. What little I do see out there yeah. is the same, like the yellow robot that was in the Obi-Wan show, which I don't even remember what any of those people were called, but there's like this large robot type thing that helps him out at some point. You can't give those away. Like right. there's the whole row of them. Um, well, so, but you know, you can't find a Darth Vader. If they, if they made yeah. a Darth Vader for that show, you can't find it. It's, it's nowhere to be found. You know, the, the, what's funny though, was the third figure and the most prominent figure on that shelf was Jackson. Uh, the bunny from the rabbit? yeah the rabbit from the marvel comics i am and i don't know if i've ever told you about this um i love that era i do oh marvel talk, comic yeah that era that we talk about that i yeah say, the wilderness years of star uh, like so here's my and- dream like i don't buy star wars figures uh, that's not my thing uh like i have my vintage stuff and that's that's fine but if they released a wave and it had like um, the balance, the hunter and Jackson, and um, I'm probably thinking of a couple of like Luke's girlfriend there and, and like as vintage <laughs> the, Star Wars action figures. 
the, the robot that uh, that Han had watching his house when he went away on adventures, when he was, you know, the Han Solo at Star's End. Like, yeah. there's so much they could do with the Russ Manning strips and the the. Uh, oh my gosh, yes. The, uh, you the, just you just you took like, it like, a step I'm, further. I keep saying this, like, why why aren't you? I said to some, I met a Hasbro person years ago at Comic Con. I was at the Entertainment Earth booth, and of course, they always get these exclusives that are just for EE. They're one of the you know, handful of retailers that get exclusive Star Wars uh, items from Hasbro. Yeah. And, like holiday special, man. I mean, not the show, the animated section. Like you've done every version of everyone. How about just the design of that? Why can't that yeah. happen? No, no, nobody will care. Nobody will care. Nobody will care. Well, they finally put out a Boba Fett uh, from droids. And then they re- re-released these small figures with the droids packaging that are similar but it, but it's not like the exact same paint job, but it's not exactly. It's like they're going to do this eventually. But like, why aren't you doing these, you know, comic based ones for that stuff that and then they put out Jackson. And first off, never seen it at retail. I've never seen that. I've seen it at Comic-Con, like at a con- like I've held the thing, but I've never seen it at retail. And I have to say, um it doesn't look like the Jackson from the Marvel comic from 1978. Yeah, no, that's the thing I said to my son today. I was like, you know, like I should buy that, but a, I don't really like the six inch scale and B, like the box every, there's no um, connection to what I like about that character. But why would you take the image from that comic with Han (laughs) his gun you know straight at the camera with jackson to his right and chewy to his left or whatever it was why wouldn't you use that for the packaging and why wouldn't you make it look like it came from the comic you know one of the charming things about those comics is how truly until it got to um uh oh what am i um uh, i always forget his name because i always go alex raymond flash gordon but the guy that you know the guy that did the the, the empire strikes back adaptation he did the the strip oh. after Russ Manning, a brilliant, brilliant artist. He did the Blade Runner comic adaptation. Yeah. Um, oh, now, <laughs> damn it. Russ, Russ. No, no, not Russ. Oh my <sighs> God, it's on the tip of my tongue. But I love because you, you, it's like he's drawing Harrison Ford, but it's it's like his version of Harrison Ford. Like you know it's Harrison Ford, but it's got his style version of, of the way he draws okay and i had looked, to look it up but now i'm mad i looked it up al and, uh, williamson al williamson it's absolute, just like it's a, damn it i knew that absolute genius and he did the flash gordon uh, comic adaptation which is spectacular for oh for, yeah no that that's the, the one that's published in the hardback yes fantastic so if you could if you could make a figure in that style you know, um, it would it would be and because that's that's when it starts to kind of look like the actors. But if you go back to the Marvel stuff, very they didn't even get close to looking like the actors in those books. There was mm-hmm. just whatever artist was doing it. It never looked like Carrie Fisher. It never looked like Mark Hamill. There were these comic book versions of the characters. Very, very stylized. Yeah. I, in fact, I, I um I my introduction to Carmen Infantino, who it was an absolute legend in the business was the star Wars comic. And I thought he couldn't draw. I, well, well, I thought about, um, I watched this. I went down the rabbit hole of <laughs> some video the other day. Some guy did, I didn't watch the whole thing, but I'm like, God, good for you, pal. Three hour and 42 minute video about all the different versions of every film, but starting with star Wars. Cause the, the star Wars versions kind of fascinate me. Not the, not, this, not when it gets to special edition and all the, 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 the tweaking, but the stereo version, the mono version. Aunt Beru's voice is different in each one. And it's, it's kind of fascinating how weird that whole process was. But, you know, all the missing scenes that are in the original adaptation and being a kid, seeing the scene with Han and Jabba at the Falcon and seeing Luke talking to Biggs about a, star, a space fight that he sees, you know, and going, what the hell is this? And then once, you know, you, you see the movie enough as, as a kid, you go back to the comic, you go, this doesn't look like anybody in the, in the movie. Like yeah. none of these people look, it was, I think it was Howard Shaken did most of the, the, that adaptation and he just worked with what he had and it never really looks like the actors. And you go, no, yeah, that's it's really uh, getting the wrong. Logan's run one makes me laugh because um, they didn't know how the back of the Sandman's uniforms looked. Sure. Probably didn't have you know, promo shots. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you could just see, like, uh, yeah, and a lot. Of, you you kind of got used to the fact that 
Well, especially the Planet of the Apes adaptations, because Heston wouldn't sign off on that. But um, remember the the Black Hole? I think it was the Black Hole. I think Williamson did it as well. And um, the likeness of Anthony Perkins and the likeness of Ernest Borgnine are all wrong. Yeah, it's just it's it remind you know it reminds me a little bit of the of the gold key Star Trek ones. Like they got Nimoy pretty right. He always looked pretty good in those in those. Comics. But when you when you read those, you'd always see the same. Like you could see that the artist would lean on a promo shot he had of Nimoy, and it would appear at least twice. Yeah, in and then you'd look at the, you'd look at the phasers and go, "Did you guys not have?" pictures of the phasers <laughs> they didn't you, they didn't yeah. in the show, you know could grab a toy or something and make but I, but there's something really charming about all that and i'll go one better which reminds me of the amigo thing i've been uh, going back into the star trek animated series and i i believe right. star trek animated series but especially as we've talked a million times the flash gordon animated filmation is the best sure. thing and ever did by a mile but the star trek one is fantastic and what it is i know it's slow and it's weird and we can it's easy to make fun of it but they clearly said well shit we can do whatever we want now we don't have to worry about a budget and there's so many great creatures and oh yeah 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 and you know as a kid when i the, the when i would occasionally see it i mean this is going this is like a very 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 early memory if i ever when i saw that thing on tv if it was repeated or something I went well. That's those are the Mego figures, like they're, they're bright, bright colors. Like the the likenesses of the characters are good, and it looks like them, but it's a slightly softer version of them. It's an animated version of the actors. Why someone doesn't with that license? If you we've talked about before how Star Trek just kind of um, is a weird in that weird realm of I don't I don't think that there are really you know, big toy collectors that collect Star Trek so much as model kits and, and books and things like that. Man, if you did a six inch animated range of those characters, I'd be all over it. And you could do it for all these little weird Star Wars things, too. I mean, it would just be. Yeah, like, I, do, I don't. Yeah, I think what you're saying is exactly why don't these big brands explore their niche? And, you know, because they're subcultures and. Yeah, I, I I don't understand it. Well, um, and things that haven't been done. Like I'm not gonna I'm not yeah. not NECA at all. But when they put out the two, the Flash and the Ming, with the they did the Defenders of the Earth one, then they did the Mattel with the Mattel card art. They 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 look like modern figures of Flash and Ming. They don't they don't look like the filmation design. They got the paint apps pretty close, silver boots from the Mattel one. Yeah. But God, I would have I wanted to make those right from the filmation. You know, and I think the Star Wars comic stuff is just because it's bonkers. The stormtroopers, there's no, there's no through line with any of the stormtroopers in those early comics. They never look the same. <laughs> they never right. look right. You know. Yeah. And, so and and if I can just interject, there's money in that because my son has an entire like room devoted to what I look at as like the same dude with different paint. Uh, because he's a Clone Wars fan. I mean, yeah, you just like the the the. Well, I mean, you know, they you know they did it. They did do something years ago. Hasbro did these two packs of four inch figures that they they took previously released figures. For, this is in the mid two thousands, I think, of like Chewbacca and Vader, and they kind of put Marvel paint apps on them. So Vader kind of had a. a reddish uh, you know the red on the eyes and, okay yeah i would and, love that you know and the little the little torture droid was painted green instead of black as, like it was in the comic chewy oh color. yeah and they did a stormtrooper they did a stormtrooper and i forget who he came with that that is the same it, you know it, it's a modern trooper sculpt you know and it looks accurate but it's got kind of the paint apps from the comic book from the marvel comic book so they did just like two sets of those and they were really neat yeah but man, I would I'd be all over well, that. Well, you know, I think what they underestimate is the fact that that kind of media, that print media, was way more impactful for people of our age, and uh, it has as much impact on us as the actual film. I agree, and I'll go one better. And again, not getting into the the, the weeds of what these shows are or thoughts about them or anything. There's a palette. 
nothing against Mandalorian or any of this stuff, but there is a paint sort of palette to all of this stuff that is very similar. You know, and that was the, that was one of the great things about the first three movies when you'd start to see merchandise or figures. And again, this was, you know, the Kenner stuff wasn't totally screen accurate, so the 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 the, the colors could be brighter. You know, like yeah, com- absolutely com- more toyetic. Com- I mean, more, look more at toy- Walrus Man or it's, Greedo. Yes, it. I think that that it's in desperate need of some color and some vibrancy. And so when I'm watching this Quantum Mania, I'm going, look at these characters. Look at mm. these creatures and shit it's like this is and you know i just read some article that was like yeah it's like it's veering into star wars territory with all these just sometimes they're on screen for two seconds or if it's five characters sitting around a table and you just get one shot of each of them you're like the imagination is is yeah. fantastic for these designs that's what's kind of missing in all of these properties it just becomes yeah. the same outfit the same colors the same you know and the i, I actually lament that ant-man and wasp movie because um, they can't uh, lean on what was the Mego micro or sort of the Marvel Micronauts uh, universe, which really expanded that whole thing. Like Quantum Mania is gonna be like the greatest opportunity to explore that, and we can't have those characters because Marvel doesn't own them. Yeah, I mean, you'd. I wonder how. I wonder how much that resonates. I mean, I know. People know the comics and stuff, and and a, a chunk of people know the Micronauts. It would be freaking awesome if it could ever. Oh happen. yeah, no, I mean but, like, and, and I know that it, like it is, you know, that, yeah, Kang it, is Kang in this film, and I haven't seen the film, of course, is like proxy Baron Karza. Yeah, you know, yeah. and um, he's be the new he's the new big bad, like he's yeah. The new but I mean, it, I I I like get thinking about like. Oh my God! Imagine if they could have kept the whole microverse in the Marvel universe, and then this could have been Baron Karza being, you know, like it's just like I know it can't happen. Um, yeah, I'm only a big because, boy, but I just sit there and think, like, damn it! I mean, you know? <laughs> like, it, look at the places it could have gone. I'm going to put it past them because yeah, I, I never thought I'd get to see Spider Man you know, interact with all these characters. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. I just, I can't get over what we've got. Don't get me wrong. I'm not upset, but, um, wow. Um, (laughs) you know, when I heard James Gunn couldn't get bug into guardians of the galaxy because nobody can figure out who owns bug. I knew that it was like, ah, oh, damn it. Yeah, okay, well, I, I have to accept what we have as well, being Well, I awesome. remember be, uh, having a lunch with Marty's uh, son years ago. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh a, um, yeah. Uh, it was uh, Ken, a, yeah. Announcement just made the trades. Micronauts movie in development. You know, Migos got the got the rights or something and there's some you know right now it's being shopped around but it's in the, and like this was like you know that was this is why we were having this lunch like hey here we go micronauts movie's gonna happen well that was you know 12 years ago 10 12 years ago um never yeah. got off the ground i don't know why but there's clearly some, some I, sh- I know i know for a fact because i had some friends on the inside that uh they were courting leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, who collected micronauts at the time yeah. and yeah. uh i don't i you know that's all i know <laughs> well you know, it, I, 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 would, I i didn't get any further uh, than that if you're gonna if you've been waiting to get back in the theater to see a marvel thing i recommend quantum mania because it's a visual feast there's a lot of stuff going on and it's really um it kicks is that, it up is that out now uh, it comes out next week oh okay next week so i went over to disney for a, a screening uh yesterday and um it's uh yeah it's good and uh yeah so um there you go there's a little little slice of uh japanese toy commercial heaven and then yeah indirectly we started talking about weird stuff about weird stuff that we want to see as toys because yeah. of the japanese weird toys that we yeah. just yeah it's all part of the same multiverse so let us know <laughs> are we getting our own avengers <laughs> uh, you me david <laughs> I, i'm in for that just to yeah. get the hell out of here go to a different universe for a change <laughs> uh, 
All right. Yeah. It, let us know in the comments if you like what we're doing here and uh, what what else you'd like us to, you know, add commentary to. I think uh, we're kind of interested in knowing what you think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very curious. Let us know. Hope you Thanks, enjoy everybody. a bit of madness. And see you in the uh, Pod Stallions Facebook group. Woohoo!